There was a hurricane one time. So trees were flying everywhere, roofs were flying off houses. And then my president, we called the assistance and the president said, yeah, everybody will be in their houses, so go to work. So we, I worked in a hurricane, so that was fun. Like branches and then roofs were flying off and I was like, oh, we shouldn't be here. The big earthquake was there right after, or right before I was there. Um, there were a couple of temblors or like tremors, and I, those were so much fun, but Chileans were still paranoid, so they freaked out, but I thought it was fun because I'd never been in an earthquake before. But, so just a couple of tremors, not a huge earthquake when I was there. There was still a ton of damage though from the 2010 Concepcion earthquake. I've lost it, but I'm a lot, I was a lot better at soccer. Um, cause instead of basketball courts, Chileans have soccer courts outside of the church that they play on. So I played soccer at least once or twice a week. Um, also I could make like the no bake chocolate cookies. I made those a ton for my investigator. So baking and soccer, but I've lost both of those skills already. Besides my general lack of Spanish, you always hear about the, the sister missionaries, they say they're pregnant instead of embarrassed because embarrassed is pregnant. Um, I don't think I made a specific mistake though other than just not being very good. I remember one of my companions, his grammar was horrible but his accent was really good so the Chileans thought he talked way better than me and that always made me mad and he'd always rub that in my face just because I he knew I was better than him but just my accent was bad. So the Chileans would always look to him as like, oh. So I told you about I got hit by a car. Um, the next dangerous thing would either be the guy who pulled the machete on me or wheelchair really, he chased us a couple times so me and my companion had to run. Just the guy in the wheelchair um, that had bats and saws so we'd either have to hide in the investigator's house or run, so usually running. I got rabies shots one time because a stray dog bit me so I had to go get rabies shots. So that wasn't, it probably wasn't dangerous but I might have had rabies, we'll never know. Coach Ayuyo, which is just straight up seaweed. Um, most missionaries thought that was nasty, including me. Most of the Chileans thought that was nasty, for that matter. Um, but that was probably the weirdest thing, because there wasn't a lot of crazy stuff, but just like the dried seaweed that people would sell on, they'd walk around on donkeys and sell it in the street. and That was the weirdest thing, Coach Ayuyo, just seaweed. In one area we were having statistical success. Um, we were doing pretty well like baptism wise, but I wasn't having like, because of that, I would say my heart just kind of forgot why I was really there. So in that area and then the next area it was just super hard because I was trying to re recalculate my heart and get it back to God um, while I was really in a mission. Um, and then in that same area, my companion was acted like a four-year-old and then the companionship I lived with one of the elders had um, ADHD and the other elder um, was pretty new so my mission president told me that I was in charge of both areas so that was just super stressful and every day I just like one point I just had an emotional breakdown after some people decided they weren't going to get baptized. Um, that was the climax of it just because I was working so hard and nothing was happening um, but it really humbled me. I really learned a lot about myself um, and it proved like when I got in an easier area, I was like, oh, I, I went through that. I can just kill it now. Um, and I ended my mission on a high note, both numbers wise, but more important, like me, I was just enjoying it. I loved everyone. Um, my converts and investigators were just the best in the world. Like God just showered blessings on me, but I had to go through almost 11 months of just heart. I don't want to say miserableness, but it was hard compared to my, the beginning and the end of my mission. But it really helped me appreciate it more. Before my mission, I played football in high school and I was um, and I wasn't very good, but I had the chance to play football in college at a smaller school. Um, but I decided to go to BYU before my mission, but while I was on it, I was like, especially when things got hard, I'd like rethink, oh, I can just go back to football, either quit, or even after, if I finish my mission, I can just play football, I don't have to do this. Um, but because I stuck it out and God helped me like change my character, I really decided I don't need this, like I can do hard things. Um, and it made me change my whole life trajectory. Um, now I wanna be a seminary teacher, um, instead of like a football coach or something in football, just cause not, football doesn't matter and there's other stuff that like we do, but it's not important and really, um, people matter. 
and helping other people. So just, I'd say the biggest life lesson is just what matters and just the whole trajectory of my life changed because of my mission.